Hello. Today I'm going to show you how to make my faux gut, which is French for fake. Um, it's not mine. Uh, I got this general idea from an article Marvin Nolte did in the Salmon Flyer, which was a, a publication put out by some of the guys in the Katinga Club years ago. Uh, Wayne Llewellyn was one. Um, some really f fabulous tires were involved. And there's lots of great information in these, uh, these little tracks. And uh, they can be found on Ron Lucas' website, and I'll link to that below. Um, we'll get going here in just a second. Uh, this is not what you'd necessarily want to put on your piece that you're doing for the museum. But for day in, day out, tying Mary Orvis Marbury flies, some practice full dress salmon flies, this is great. If you want to buy real gut, it's difficult to come by. Um, but uh, John McLean makes his own at feathersmc.com. He's got aquariums and he's got uh, silkworms and he produces batches of, of gut, twists it up with a, with a, a Kelson dubbing twister, I believe. And uh, it's, it's pretty remarkable what he, what he does. And you can, you can buy it from him. It's, it's not cheap, but it's, man, I mean, this stuff takes a lot of effort and time to make. So there's that. And then there's the fake stuff that I use all the time myself. This is the uh, mono I use, uh, six to eight pound test, clear. I've got 333 yards here. I think 100 feet of this would probably make enough faux gut for me to last maybe the rest of my life. But anyway, maybe I'll buy a spinning reel. I don't know. This is one of those fly containers you get at fly shops like Gates Lodge up there in Michigan. Uh, and just... Take a piece of the mono, maybe about 20 feet or so, uh, 15, 20 feet, coil it up, and then put a big blob of crazy glue and use the, the slower drying stuff I, is what I use, and it works great. And then close it up and wait 24 hours. Uh, the fumes will work and they will etch both the inside of the container and they will etch the, the mono that you've got in there. So then you'll take th three, you'll cut that into three pieces and stick one side in your vise and then some sort of twister on the other end. And I, I got pretty sophisticated with my dubbing twister here, uh, vice grip pliers. But you could use anything that has, has some weight. And I've got a camera in the way here, so it's kind of hard for me to get this going twisting wise, but you want to twist it up a lot. Um, twist it up until it starts doubling back on itself. Really get this twisted. And um, w once you're done twisting, um, then what I do is, is I, I, I stabilize the, uh, the pliers. Here's what happens if you if you take the pliers and put them up on your counter, the dubbing will all or the uh, I'm sorry, I got dubbing twisters on the brain. The uh, mono will all twist up like that, and in order to get rid of that, uh, we're gonna heat this up with a hair straightener, and a hair straightener just works great for this. Uh, I've, it's far superior to trying to boil the stuff and then freeze it or something, which didn't work for me at all. That's what it tells you to do in the Salmon Flyer document, I believe, if memory serves, but it didn't work for me. I, I wouldn't bother. The hair, hair straightener is a lot better. And you really want to jack the heat up on the hair straightener. It's about, about the temperature of the sun. And... Uh, it's very dangerous, so don't have anything flammable around. And just keep the hair straightener moving at all times. 
just go down the, the entire length of the mono. And every once in a while, take weight off of the, the pliers and see how much it's twisting up. And when you get to the point where it's not, where it's not twisting up, where it's like this, and you can take the, the pliers off and it still just hangs down nicely, then you're done. And here's the finished product coiled up and ready to be put on a fly.